Now that you've got your very first database table created, we actually want to insert some data into the database. Now there's two ways that you can add additional data and information into a MySQL database. Now the first one, and that's what I'm going to go through here in this video, is actually manually inserting that data with PHP MyAdmin. Now the other alternative is uh, automatically inserting or manually inserting any of the data and information that you want using your PHP code later on. And later in a different video, I'll go into that when we actually get into the PHP code that you'll use to interact with your MySQL database. So in order to manually add data into your MySQL database table, you want to make sure you have PHP MyAdmin open and you're selected to the database and the table that you're trying to insert the data into. Now, when you browse through PHP MyAdmin and you select your database and your table, you'll be brought directly to the Browse page, the Browse tab. And from within this tab, you'll be able to see any of the data and information that's currently stored inside your database and your database table. Now, when we just created our database table, there's no data inside of the table. That's why you see uh, this little message here that says MySQL returned an empty result, i.e. zero rows because, well, there's no data in the table. So in order to manually insert data, you want to go to the Insert tab. And then once you go to the Insert tab, you'll get a very simple form that you'll be able to manually insert as many pieces of data that you want into your database table. So if you think back to when we created the table in the last video, we created four different columns, and that's where we have our column, and we created each of these has a very unique name associated with it. So we have our ID, our user, password, and date. Now, if you remember, we set our ID to an auto increment. So we're gonna leave that value as blank. We're just gonna put no number inside of that text box. Then when we actually insert this data into the database, when we click the go button, MySQL and PHP MyAdmin will automatically insert the next number in the database as part of that primary key and that auto increment that we have set up. So the very first piece of information that we insert, the very first row, as they're called, we insert into the database, it'll give it an ID of one. And then every time we add a new piece of data into the table, it'll auto increment that up. So the second one will be number two, third, three, so on and so forth. So like I said, we're just gonna leave the value as being blank. The user is just a varchar, can be up to 50 characters. So just type in a very simple username of Nick. And then password for now, I'm just gonna type in password. Now, like I said in the previous video, when you actually automatically insert your password into the database and you store that information, you wanna make sure you're using a very secure method of doing that like password hashing. And I'll touch on that later on in the PHP videos. And then for the date, like I said in the previous video, it's gonna be automatically generated from the PHP time function. But for now, I'm just gonna type in a bunch of zeros Actually, I'll start out with a bunch of numbers, so that way we can actually use this number to generate a PHP date later on. Whenever you're satisfied with adding that single row into the database, you can click the Go button. Now, if you want to add multiple rows at the same time, you can start entering in information in the second column, or the second row that's listed right below that. So I'll create a second user as Tess, with a password of password1, and a date of just a little bit higher of a number. And then whenever you're satisfied with all the information you entered into PHP MyAdmin, you can just click the Go button. It'll take a couple of seconds to process, and then you'll notice that you'll get a message saying your two rows were inserted, or one row, depending on how many you inserted. Something you may notice is that you will have the MySQL query that was auto-generated to actually insert your data into MySQL database. Now, PHP MyAdmin will automatically generate this every single time and display it back to you. So if you want to use this query again to perform or rather insert the same data into the database later on, you can absolutely do that. But in a later video, when we actually touch on how to interact with our MySQL database with our PHP code, I'll be going fully in depth on how to actually create each of these MySQL queries. And it's gonna be super fun. Now, when you're ready and you're done inserting the data, you can go to the Browse tab and now you'll see that we have two rows being returned to us. We have our two different users of Nick and Tess with our passwords of password and password one. So now that we've successfully manually added 
information and rows into our database, you can actually use phpMyAdmin to edit that data that's already in there, or you can easily delete it with the click of a button. So the first thing we're going to touch on is how to edit. So from the phpMyAdmin page where you have your table selected, you can either click on the individual piece of information that you want to edit, so such as this uh, password, you can click on it twice, and then phpMyAdmin, we use a little bit of JavaScript and jQuery action, and then you can manually change that. And then if you click outside of it, you'll see the one row affected, it'll automatically submit that information back into the database and save it for you. Alternatively, if you wanna edit multiple pieces of information at the same time, you can just click on the very convenient edit button and then you'll see the exact same form that we saw when we manually inserted the data into the database. And then you can edit it that way. And then you can also manually delete data from the database inside of phpMyAdmin. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the second user account that we created. So I'm just gonna click on the delete button. You'll get a pop-up asking you to confirm that you're trying to delete the user from the database or that specific row, I should say. Click the okay button and then Bob's your uncle. The database row has been deleted. 